a Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid, I believe the good news, so I'm a Jesus kid, a Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid, God can use me too, cause I'm a Jesus kid, a Jesus kid. Boys and girls, Pastor Steve here, and welcome to Kids Church. Are you guys ready for today's Bible study? Are you as excited as I am? I can't wait to hear what God has for us today. But what do we need, boys and girls, if we're going to hear from the Lord? That's right, we need our Bibles. So do you have your Bibles with you today? All right, great job. Well, boys and girls, today... We're going to be in the book of Luke again. And do you remember who wrote the book of Luke? That's right. Luke wrote the book of Luke. And do you remember who Luke was? What did Luke do, boys and girls? Do you remember what he did for a living? Yeah, he was a doctor, wasn't he? And whose doctor was he? Who does history say he was he was helping. Do you remember it was the Apostle Paul? Now, is Luke, boys and girls, is it in the Old Testament or in the New Testament? Do you remember? That's right, it's in the New Testament. Remember, Luke is the third book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Right? Great job, everybody. Now, the Gospel of Luke has some really amazing stories in it. It has the story of the birth of John the Baptist. It has the story of the birth of Jesus. It has the story of the parable of the Good Samaritan. And today, we're going to learn about the story, the parable of the lost sheep. Well, if you have your Bibles, you can open them up today. We're going to be in Luke chapter 15 and we're going to be looking at the first 10 verses of the gospel of luke chapter 15 and again our title for today's bible study is the parable of the lost sheep well before we go any further boys and girls let's have mia share our memory verse with us today and our memory verse is going to come from matthew chapter 18 and verse 11 so mia why don't you go ahead, sweetie? For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Matthew 18, 11. Well, great job, Mia. Boys and girls, did you catch the missing word? Did you find out what Matthew chapter 18, verse 11 says? What did the Son of Man come to do? Matthew 18, 11 says, The Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Who is the Son of Man, boys and girls? That's right, it's Jesus. And what did Jesus come to do? Matthew 18, 11 says, He came to save that which was lost. Good job, Mia. Thank you so much. And if you guys want to be like Mia and share our memory verse, well, just have your parents go to our Instagram page and send me a message letting me know that you want to be a part of our Bible study. Well, now, boys and girls, it's time for our Bible word search. It's time to find the key words for today, the key words for our Bible study. And today, we have six key words that we're going to be looking for. And so if you look at your screen, you can see our words for today. The words joy, scribes, parable, lost, heaven, and rejoice. And so let's see if we can find our first word, boys and girls. The word joy. Can you find that anywhere on your screen? Do you know what it means to have joy? Joy is something that we have when we know who our God is 
It's not being happy, it's being joyful. Do you know that in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, Nehemiah tells the children of Israel that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's being joyful. Did you find the word joy, boys and girls? Look towards the bottom of your screen. Great job. Now our next word is the word scribes. Can you find scribes on your screen anywhere, boys and girls? Now the Bible talks about the Pharisees and the scribes. The scribes, who were they? It was someone who had learned the Mosaic law. It was someone who was an interpreter or a teacher. Someone who answered the difficult questions in the Bible or in the law. Did you guys find the word scribes? Look very closely. I found it. Did you? Good job. Now, our next word is the word parable. Can you guys find that? The word parable. What is a parable? Do you guys know what a parable is? Yeah, a parable is an earthly story. But it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And Jesus would share parables. He would share stories that the people could understand, but he shared it with a meaning of heaven. Do you see the word parable anywhere, boys and girls? There you go from right to left. Good job. Now, our next word is the word lost. Do you see the word lost anywhere on your screen? What does it mean to be lost? Well, some of us know to be lost is not having direction. To be lost means to perish or to be ruined or destroyed. Boys and girls, we are lost before we are saved. When we are lost, before we ask Jesus into our hearts, boys and girls, we are headed for destruction, for eternal separation from him. The Bible tells us unless we ask Jesus into our hearts, we're going to spend eternity in hell. But the Bible tells us that he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. So if we believe in him, we will not perish, but we'll have everlasting life. Do you see the word lost, boys and girls? Do you see it there on your screen? Great job. Now, our next word is the word heaven. What is heaven, boys and girls? Can you just picture heaven and how beautiful it is? But who lives in heaven, boys and girls? That's right. It's where God is. God is in heaven. And one day, too, if we have asked Jesus in our hearts, that's where we will be. Did you find the word in heaven, boys and girls? Look very closely over towards the left-hand side. Great job. Now, our next word is the word rejoice, our last word for today. Can you find rejoice anywhere on your screen? Who knows what it means to rejoice? It means to take part in somebody else's joy. It's another word for joyful. Now, Paul tells us in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, that we are to rejoice in the Lord always. And he says, again, I say rejoice. We're to be joyful in the Lord. Do you see the word rejoice, boys and girls? Can you find it anywhere? Look there towards the top of your screen. Great job, everybody. Well, boys and girls, those are our key words for today. And you guys all did such a great job in finding them. But remember, there's more key words that you can find here, right here on your screen. And if you print the, the papers below that you can find by clicking on the link, you're going to be able to print out our word search, our coloring sheet. There's a connect the dot page. There's the question and answer. There's even a craft page for you guys. And so have your parents print it out for you so you could follow along and you could even have some more fun after our Bible study. Well, again, boys and girls, today's Bible study is the parable of the lost sheep. And in this story, boys and girls, we want you to always remember that God loves you very much. 
And just like the Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verse 16, that he loved us so much that he came to die on the cross. And our, and our Bible verse, our memory verse that Mia shared, that's the reason why Jesus came. It says, the Son of Man came to save that which was lost. Boys and girls, he came to save you and me. And boys and girls, you know there's a, a very neat proverb. As we just saw our maze, right? And we're trying to find direction and where to go. Should we go up? Should we go down? Should we go left? Should we go right? The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And as we are seeking the Lord, as we are looking for him, as we are putting him first in our lives, boys and girls, he will guide our steps. He will direct our steps. He will show us the path to go. Well, boys and girls, it's time for our Bible study today. Do you have your Bibles? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to hear from the Lord? Well, boys and girls, let's take a minute now and let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes and let's ask the Lord to go before us today and let's ask him to speak to our hearts. And so let's, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we just come to you today so thankful, Lord, for all you have done for us. We are so thankful, Lord, that you sent your son, Jesus, to this earth, Lord, to die on a cross for our sins. We thank you, Lord, that that is the reason why he came, to seek and to save that which was lost. And we thank you, Lord, that we no longer have to be lost, that we can trust in you, that we have been saved, Lord, by trusting and believing in you, not only that you died, Father, but that you rose again on the third day. And we just ask now, Lord Jesus, that as we open up our Bibles and we read and we learn about this parable, that you would speak to our hearts, Lord, that we would have an ear to hear what it is that you have to tell us. And again, Lord, we just pray, Father, that we would not be hearers only, but that we would be doers of your word. Bless our time now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, if you have your Bibles, let's open them up to the Gospel of Luke. Matthew, Mark, then Luke. And Luke chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 1 through 10. And so follow along as I read Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. It says, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just, just persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, Sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Wow, boys and girls, Jesus gives us two illustrations here. And the illustrations that Jesus is giving are examples that the people that he is talking to can understand. And so he gives an example of someone who loses a sheep, and then he gives an example of someone who loses a coin in her house. Both of these items, both of these things that Jesus is talking about are valuable to these people. And they are going out and they're searching and looking for them because they don't want to lose them. 
They need them. They mean something to them. And then Jesus takes this illustration and shares with them the, the meaning of it, an eternal meaning. Not just something here on earth, but something that applies to heaven. And so let's take a look at our screen. And let's begin by looking at our question and answer page. And so question number one is a fill in the blanks question. And so it comes from Luke chapter 15 verse 1. And so let's read Luke 15 verse 1 and see if we can fill in the blanks. Luke 15 1 says, Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. Boys and girls, what are our missing words here? Out of Luke chapter 15 verse 1, who came? Then all the what? Tax collectors, that's right, and the sinners drew near to him. And what did they draw near to him to do? They draw near to him to hear him. Now, boys and girls, this verse here, just looking at it, boys and girls, I think there's a good example for us, boys and girls, that we need to follow. And what is that good example? What is the tax collectors and the sinners, what did they do? They drew near to Jesus. Boys and girls, the Bible tells us to draw near to him. And what did they draw near to him to do? That's right, they drew near to him to hear him, to hear what Jesus was saying. And boys and girls, that's what we're doing today. We're drawing near to God. We're listening to see what he has to tell us. Now, boys and girls, the tax collectors and the sinners, they were people that the Pharisees and the scribes, they looked down upon. Because who wants to hang out with sinners? Well, at least that's what they were saying. But boys and girls, Jesus loves each and every single one of us the same. Jesus came to die for each and every single one of us. He didn't come just to die for the people that are nice. He just didn't come to die for the people that are fun to hang around. He just didn't come to die for the people that go to church. He came to die for everyone because he loves each and every single person. Well, if we look at our screen, we're going to look at question number two. These questions are now true and false questions. And so let's look at Luke 15 verse 2 so we can answer correctly. Luke 15, verse 2, it says, And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Well, what does question number two say? Question number two on our screen says, And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man does not receive sinners and does not eat with them. Boys and girls, is this true or false? Yeah, this is false. The scribes and the Pharisees, they complained because Jesus took the time to eat with the tax collectors, to eat with the sinners. He welcomed them. The scribes and the Pharisees did all that they could to avoid them, to stay away from them, but not Jesus. Jesus loved them, and Jesus knew that they were lost. They, he knew that they needed to be saved. And so what does Jesus do? Well, we see in verse 3 what Jesus does. Verse 3 says, So he spoke this parable to them, saying... So Jesus now is going to talk to them in a way that they can understand. He's going to give them a story that they can relate to. A story about sheep. Because a lot of these people, they were shepherds. They took care of the animals. And they knew what it meant to have sheep. And so our next question comes from verse 4. And so let's read verse 4. Jesus says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after one which is lost until he finds it? And so Jesus is giving this example now, boys and girls. He's given an example of a shepherd who has a hundred sheep sheep. And he says, those of you guys who have a hundred sheep, if you lose just one of them, wouldn't you leave the 99 where they were 
and go and find the one who's out in the wilderness all by himself? Well, let's look at our screen and let's answer this question. Let's see if we can answer it correctly, true or false, based upon what we just read. Verse 4 in question number 3 says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? Boys and girls, is this true or is this false? Is this what the Bible says? Yes. Question number three matches with what our Bible says. Now, boys and girls, a question for you. How many sheep does the man have in this story? What does verse four tell us? How many sheep is there? That's right, there's 100 sheep. The shepherd has a lot of sheep. But what happened to one of the sheep? What does verse four tell us? One of them got lost, didn't they? One of the sheep was separated from the uh, the rest of the sheep and the shepherd. What did the man do when he noticed that the sheep was missing? Verse 4 says, he's going to leave the 99 and he's going to go and find the one and bring it back to the rest of the sheep. He's going to go and search for it until he finds it. Well, let's look at question number four. Question number four comes from Luke chapter 15, verse 5. It says, let's read verse 5. It says, and when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Boys and girls, does this match up with question number four? Question number four says, and when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Is that true or false, boys and girls? That's right, it's true. That's what the Bible says, boys and girls. I cannot stress enough. We always need to go to the Bible for truth. We can't take anybody's word. We can't take a picture on your screen as truth. Only what the Bible says is truth. And so this shepherd, he went out seeking. He went out searching for this lost sheep. Well, let's think about this for a second, boys and girls. If you were that lost sheep, what do you think it would be like? If you were separated, if you were out on your own, would it be scary? Would there be uncertainty? Would you be looking for your shepherd? What do you think it was like for the man who lost his sheep? Do you think he was worried? Do you think he was hurting? Do you think that all he was doing was looking and searching and praying and hoping that he would find that lost sheep? Well, according to verse 5, when that man lost, found his lost sheep, boys and girls, what did he do with the sheep? Boys and girls, he picked it up and he put it over his shoulders. Boys and girls, he carried it all the way back to the sheepfold. He carried it all the way back to be with the rest of the sheep. Boys and girls, the shepherd dropped everything that he was doing because he loved his sheep so much and he wanted it to be back with him. He did everything that he could do to find it. And boys and girls, according to verse 5, what did he do when he found his sheep? After he picked it up and he came back, how was he coming back? What does it say? What's the last word in that verse? It says he was rejoicing, boys and girls. He was happy. He was joyful. He was happy that he found the sheep that was lost. Well, verse 6, it's a fill-in-the-blank question. Let's look at verse 6 so we can fill in the blanks correctly. Verse 6 says, And when he comes home... He calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, 
Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Boys and girls, what is our missing words here in question number five? What does the man tell his neighbors? He goes out and he tells his neighbors, neighbors, come with me and rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. He wanted others to partake in his joy. He wanted others to be joyful with him because they knew that he had lost a sheep. You know, boys and girls, sometimes when we are going through hard times, you know what we do? We ask for people to pray for us, don't we? Teacher, will you pray for me? Mommy, daddy, will you pray for me? Pastor, will you pray for me? Because we're going through difficult times. And sometimes when God answers our prayers, you know what we forget to do? We forget to share the good news of what God has done. And this man, he's rejoicing with his neighbors. He's saying, guys, look, the sheep that was lost is now found. Well, let's look at question number six. It's another fill in the blank question. It comes from verse seven. And verse seven says, I say to you, that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Boys and girls, what are our missing words here on our screen? There will be more what? More joy in heaven over just one sinner who repents. Now, boys and girls, Jesus is now giving them the, the heavenly definition of what this earthly story means. Remember, that's what a parable is. And so Jesus has just given them this illustration of a sheep who was lost and a shepherd who found his lost sheep. And he's saying, so you can understand this. This is what it's like in heaven. When one person who was lost, one person who was separated from me, one person who has walked away from me, do you know that there's more joy, there's more rejoicing in heaven than that shepherd and all of those neighbors put together when that sheep was found? Do you know how excited and how happy we are in heaven when just one person comes to know me as their Lord and Savior? Boys and girls, Jesus is teaching us how much God loves us and just like the sheep boys and girls people too can be lost and trapped by sin does God want all of us to be saved from our sins does God want children to be saved from their sins yes he does boys and girls and when a person, a man, a woman, or a child ask for forgiveness of sins, when they repent, what happens in heaven, boys and girls? What does verse 7 say? That there's joy, that there's rejoicing. Boys and girls, that day that you came to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there was rejoicing in heaven. And if you haven't yet asked Jesus to be Lord and Savior of your life, at the end of today's Bible study, we're going to give you a chance. And if you do that, there's going to be rejoicing in heaven. Well, boys and girls, let's take a look at our screen again. Let's look at question number seven. Jesus is going to give another parable, another example, another story. And verse eight of Luke chapter 15, it says, or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully for it until she finds it? Boys and girls, what are our missing words here in this question? Remember Luke chapter 8, verse, Luke chapter 15, verse 8? It says if she loses one coin, boys and girls, what does she do? She lights a lamp, and what does she do? She sweeps the whole house looking for it. 
because that one coin is valuable to her. Even though she has 10, if she loses one, it's extremely valuable. It means something to her. Let's look at question number eight. It comes from Luke chapter 15 and verse nine. And so verse nine says, and when she has found it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me for I have found the peace which I lost. What are our missing words here, boys and girls? Rejoice, that's right. Rejoice with me for the peace which I lost, I now have found. Just like the shepherd who had lost his sheep, he calls his friends, he calls his neighbors, and the lady does the same thing. She calls all of those around her and says, Rejoice with me. Be joyful for me. Because the peace that I was missing... I have found it. Well, let's read verse 10. That's question number nine. Verse 10 says, Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What are our missing words here, boys and girls? Over the presence of, over all the angels. There's joy in the presence of all the angels of God over just one sinner who repents. And just like verse 7 says, there's joy in heaven. Boys and girls, Jesus has given us two illustrations, two examples of something that was valuable, that was missing, that now is found, and how we can rejoice and be happy, but it pales in comparison. It doesn't compare to the joy that is in heaven when one person comes to know the Lord. Now, boys and girls, I want to share a story with you. A, few, a couple years ago, my family, we were at the beach. And we were hanging out, having fun at the beach. But all of a sudden, my wife, her wedding ring, it flew off. And it flew off into the sand, the sand that you see on your screen right now. Now, boys and girls, can you imagine if her ring fell off and it flew into the sand. We don't even know what direction it went. Can you imagine looking for it right there in all of that sand? Boys and girls, if you look at the picture very closely, you can see a Barbie doll that's laying in the sand. But you have to look very closely. Can you imagine if it's that hard seeing the Barbie doll, how hard it's going to be to see a ring? And the wind, boys and girls, it blows the sand and it buries things. The tide comes and it covers the sand. People are walking and it buries things. And so we had no idea where this ring went. We started to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, show us, show us where this ring is at. And you know what, boys and girls, I would ask you right now, ask your mommies, how they would feel if they lost their wedding ring. Now, my wife, she was in tears because her ring meant so much for, to her. And we had all those people that were with us were searching. They were looking all around trying to find this ring. There were people that we didn't even know that were helping us. And boys and girls, we had no idea where it was at. But we kept praying. And just like the shepherd with the one sheep, we kept looking and looking. And just like the woman who had lost her coin, we kept looking and looking. And we had spent a lot of time looking. Then all of a sudden, my little girl, Harmony, she stops and she says, Mommy, I think I found your ring. She had stepped on it, boys and girls. And sure enough, she had found her mommy's ring. Boys and girls, do you know how happy everybody was that we had found the ring? Can you imagine how happy my wife was that we had found her ring? But boys and girls, that pales in comparison. That does not compare to the joy that is in heaven when one person comes to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. 
Boys and girls, our story today, the parable of the lost sheep, there was the stories that God had given to us to remind us of how happy he is, how joyful we are, people are, the angels in heaven when we come to know the Lord. And now it's time to look at our screen, boys and girls, and it's time to find the differences. And today there are six changes that we're going to look for. And so look very closely at the left-hand side, and let's compare that to the picture on the right-hand side. Do you see any changes? Well, I see one. Do you see up at the top of your screen, you see the birds in the air? Yeah, that's not in our original picture. What about that palm tree over there on the left-hand side? That's not in our original picture either. Do you see on the rock down there, that lizard? That's three things. What's a fourth thing that you guys see? You see the clouds? Yeah, they're missing, aren't they? Over on the right-hand side, the clouds aren't there, but there's a house and a bluff over there, so a little hillside. Well, that's five. What is the sixth thing that's missing? What is the sixth change, boys and girls? Do you see it? Look closely at the shepherd. Look at his belt. That's missing. Great job, everyone. Boys and girls, as we're looking at the changes here on our screen, I'm going to ask you this question. Boys and girls, who never changes? That's right. God never changes. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6, he tells us that. He says, for I am the Lord, I do not change. And in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, he tells us that I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who was, who is, and who was, and who is to come. Boys and girls, even though our picture changes, even though things in our life changes, we need to remember that God never changes changes. Well, let's recap our Bible study, boys and girls. Remember our memory verse? What did Jesus come to this earth to do? That's right. Jesus came to this earth to save those people who are lost. What does it mean to save someone? That's right, to rescue someone from danger. And what does Jesus saved people from. That's right, their sins. And what does it mean? Why do we need to be rescued from sin? Good job, boys and girls, because if we're not rescued from sin, the Bible tells us that we are going to spend eternity separated from God, separated from Jesus in a place called hell. And hell is not a place that is joyful. It's not a place that anybody wants to be. Boys and girls, sin is a problem because it separates us from God. And so we need a Savior. Boys and girls, God doesn't want our hearts to be far away from Him because of sin. Do you know when we sin, boys and girls, our hearts grow further and further and further away from God? Boys and girls, what did Jesus do so that people can be rescued and saved from sin? Do you remember what he did for us? That's right. He died on a cross. He loved us so much that he came to this earth to die on a cross so that we can be saved from sin. And boys and girls, just like the man in this story who loved his lost sheep and wanted to find it, and the woman who had the coin and lost it and wanted to find it, God loves us so much, and he wants to save us from sin and to give us eternal life in heaven. Boys and girls, do you want to have eternal life with Jesus in heaven? Do you know that he loves you? Do you know that he came to this earth just for you to give you eternal life? 
That's what our memory verse was today. He came to save us, boys and girls, and he showed us his love. The Bible tells us that he demonstrated his love for us. While we were still sinners, he came and he died on the cross. Boys and girls, have you asked Jesus into your hearts? If you have, that's a awesome. I'm so glad. Because that means we're brothers and sisters in Christ and we have the promise, the promise and the hope of heaven. But if you haven't, boys and girls, would you like to do that today? Would you like to ask Jesus to come into your heart and to save you so that you too can have the hope of heaven? Well, all you have to do, boys and girls, is pray a simple prayer. Why don't we all bow our heads right now? Why don't we all close our eyes? And those of you who want to ask Jesus in your heart, all you have to do, boys and girls, is say, Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I need a Savior. And I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of all of my sins and to come into my heart and to be Lord of my life. Give me the strength and the ability to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. And boys and girls, if you prayed that prayer, he promises to come into your heart. He promises to cleanse you of all of your sin. That means he promises to forgive you. And he also promises you eternal life. Life with him in heaven forever and ever. And do you know what else just happened, boys and girls? What did Luke chapter 15 verse 7 tell us? There was joy in heaven. And in verse 10, it says, there was joy in the presence of all of the angels, boys and girls. They're celebrating in heaven because of what you have just done. You have come and you have been saved of all of your sins. How exciting is that? Oh, well, boys and girls, do you remember our verse from today, the one that Mia shared with us at the beginning of our Bible study from Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. Can you say it with me? The Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Boys and girls, and if you've asked Jesus into your heart, he's done what he said he came to do. How awesome is that, boys and girls? What a great Bible study that was today, wasn't it? knowing what Jesus came to do and what he has done for you and for me. Well, boys and girls, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.